time to come death, the destroyer of worlds. When U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt started the Manhattan Project, it began a chain of events that would change the world forever. Oppenheimer's biggest regret. The birth of the atomic bomb. Welcome to Lab 360. It's time to explore. The 20th century was the era of physicists, with Niels Bohr coming up with the model of an atom, Einstein with his theory of relativity, and Max Planck with quantum physics. They altered the world of science forever. But we begin with the periodic table. So, the periodic table is a sequence of nuclear counts of protons. Hydrogen has one proton, helium, two protons, lithium, three protons. Each nuclei of an atom contains energy waiting to be released. But how does one access that energy? In the late 1800s, we learned that some atoms are not stable. For example, a version of uranium is unstable because it has 92 protons in the nucleus, but has a different number of neutrons. When the number of neutrons varies, it is called an isotope. Remember, it's the atom, but with a different number of neutrons, which changes its properties. So, the unstable version of uranium spontaneously breaks into two atoms, leading to release of energy that's called radioactivity. When an element is radioactive, it is splitting on its own and releasing energy. While energy is good, it also becomes hot and releases tremendous heat. This splitting of an atom is called fission. Moving to the other end of the periodic table, we have hydrogen, which cannot be broken as it has only one proton. But you can combine the elements together to form a heavier element. When this is done, the mass of the heavier element is less than the sum of the parts. Now hold your horses. Where did the mass go? We fall back to Albert Einstein. No, not him exactly, but his infamous equation. E equals to mc square. Which means when you lose mass, you gain energy on the other side of the equation. To put it in simple words, you can put lighter atoms Combine them together to make heavier atoms, and energy gets released. Sounds similar. Our sun does this. So you combine two atoms of hydrogen to get helium, and helium combines to give carbon. This process requires high energy, so thermo. Nuclear because the nucleus of an atom is involved. Fusion as you are fusing them together. A thermonuclear fusion. Coming back to our sun. It converts hydrogen into helium, releasing energy, giving us heat and warmth for everyday life. So, at the high end, the atom is split, which releases energy, which uranium does on its own. That's fission. Whereas, hydrogen requires high temperature and high pressure for coming together, and that's fusion. When uranium unstably splits, it releases a neutron, and that neutron goes ahead and splits another atom, then another, then more, going one, then two, four, then eight, and then 16, leading to an out of control chain reaction. That's what an atomic bomb is. It contains an isotope of purifying uranium, crammed together to initiate a reaction using a trigger, causing a tremendous release of energy instantaneously. Disturbingly amazing, isn't it? What are your thoughts? Drop in your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to Lab360. Because together, we will explore.